Okay, so we're back at home now and we are in my kitchen. And as you can see, there is a bunch of stuff on my counter that I'm gonna explain about. And I'm gonna try to do it somewhat quickly because there's a fair amount of stuff that I wanna cover. So to start off with the whole aloe vera juice thing, if you didn't notice earlier on in the video, when we went to the cafe, I got a cup of chamomile tea. And that was something that I didn't include when I was explaining about my diet that I don't have any caffeine either. And so chamomile has been something that I've really began to love over these past probably like six months to a year. And it's something that I don't have it earlier on in the day when I'm at work because it does make me really mellow and like kind of tired almost. I'll have it at the end of the day, but on my days off, I'll have it in the morning. Um, so that's something that I really enjoy. I typically though have my aloe vera juice as the first thing that I'll have when I wake up in the morning. Why I drink aloe vera is because it hydrates me on such a deeper level than what water does. And aloe is something, I haven't really researched it super hard. I know the hydrating properties of it, um, but I know that there's something else in there and I'm not sure if it's the mineral content, but that's what I'm leaning towards. And after I research it more, maybe I'll update you guys. Um, but there's something about aloe juice that when I don't have it, I notice a very big difference. And for me, a lot of my sleepiness if I wake up in the morning is due to being dehydrated. And so I found that drinking aloe upon first waking, and then I also have a little bit more of it at night. So I drink probably about six to eight ounces a day. Um, it's also really amazing for the digestion. It's great for skin and hair, but I take it, I take it for those reasons too, but I mostly take it because, um, I love how it makes me feel. I notice a complete difference in that deeper level of hydration that it gives me. So I'm going to have my aloe, my morning aloe while we're doing this part of the video. It kind of tastes, I get, I've gotten used to it. When my husband has had it, he's like, ew, this is so nasty. It's not slimy like aloe vera gel. And the one that I get is an organic one. So it doesn't have any preservatives in it, which I think is important. Um, so it's preserved with uh, lemon juice, I think. Yeah, lemon juice concentrate. So to me, that's what it tastes like is like a light citrusy. It does have a different texture than water. Um, but I absolutely love it. Heads up too, if you're having digestion and gut issues, this works wonders for, for that kind of thing. Um, it can get things moving pretty quick, if you know what I mean. I gave some when I was at work to a friend of mine that I work with. And after he like got back from the bathroom, he's like, whoa, is that normal? I'm like, yeah, that's normal. So especially if you're not used to it, it can have that effect. Um, so it's something to keep in mind if you're dealing with digestion issues in Kratom addiction, that it can be really helpful. So moving on, what do I eat? Why do I eat it? Um, I have some of the foods that I eat. It's pretty much, it's pretty much, this is what it looks like on a daily basis for me, give or take a couple things. And on a weekly basis, I would say too, because some of these things I don't eat every day. Um, but the main part of my diet, and you probably can't see it, I'll hold the stuff up to the camera, is meat and animal sourced foods. So this is the foundation of my diet, literally this exact meat. Um, I choose ground beef because let's be real, who can afford to eat steak every day? I can't. And ground beef for me is very versatile. I also didn't mention in the overview of what I ate that I do best with a higher fat diet. And I'm not talking about fat from like French fries and potato chips and processed foods. I'm talking about fat from animal sources. So eating an 80-20 blend is really good for me. 
And let's be real, fat tastes good too, and texturally it's really good. Um, so this is also, like I said, it's most affordable for me. So this is literally the foundation of my diet. And on any given day, depending on many factors, I at least eat a pound a day. Sometimes I eat two pounds a day. Um, I'll start talking about like different meals that I have at the end. I'm just going to do an overview of like the foods. Um, I eat a ton of eggs. I've gone in and out with eggs. Sometimes I've eaten a lot of them. Sometimes um, when I was trying to figure out, I was having um, problems with my skin for a little bit and I cut them out for a few months to see if that could be a component. Um, it wasn't thankfully because I love them and they're all so cheap. But I've gone in and out with eggs and oh my gosh, there's like, <laughs> cause the eggs are, there's cracked egg shells and there's little bits of egg white dripping out. That's funny. Um, I'll clean that up later. So, you know, just, just eggs, you know, like I'll eat sometimes in one sitting like four or five eggs. And interestingly, I find that eggs stick to my ribs, meaning like I feel full longer from eggs than, than just eating meat. So that's interesting. So I typically have eggs for my first meal and I'll do like a, a half a pound of ground beef as well. We'll get into the meals in a minute, but um, yeah, so eggs are a big part of my diet. Um, I have these wild sardines in water about once a week. This is actually Peanut's box because Peanut also has sardines. Um, it makes her coat really shiny and she loves them. She smells like fish for a little bit afterwards, but it's worth it for the health benefits. These are super great for you, high in omegas. Um, and I find that about once a week is good for me with these. This is part of our treat day. Um, it is a chuck roast that I'm gonna throw in the crock pot. Uh, we typically don't do cuts of meat unless they're on sale. This wasn't on sale. That's why it, it, it's a treat to have today. And um, my husband eats a completely different diet, but when I make stuff like this, we obviously share it. So when I say we, um, we, you know how grocery prices are. We try to eat as frugally as possible. And given what I eat, I have to be very conscious about what I buy, where I buy it, um, how I prepare it, because this diet is going to cost more than eating just ramen noodles and mac and cheese. So it's something that I'm very conscious of. We shop sales super hard. And why ground beef is foundational to my diet is because it's most affordable. Um, I got some flank and short ribs, which are one of my favorite cuts last week on sale. It's not something that I have every day. Steak is not something that I have every day. It might be nice to, but it's just not conducive to, you know, eating on a budget. And so having this chuck roast tonight in the crock pot is going to be delicious. I could have definitely gotten this from another store for cheaper, but um, as you know, they don't call it whole paycheck for nothing. Love my Whole Foods, but you know how it is. The prices are typically higher for some things. You can get some things for a better price, though, which is cool. So this is going to be a nice treat. Um, so yeah, that's the foundation of my diet, which is foods from animal sources. Sometimes I get some shrimp. Um, some wild-caught wild shrimp is my absolute favorite uh, because of the flavor not because of if farm braised tasted as good, I would love them, but I found this really nice, um, I think they're from Key West or something, wild caught shrimp. And I get that also as a treat because as you know, you know, a lot of seafoods can be expensive too. Salmon, we try to get, I try to have raw salmon at least, I mean, if I could, afford it. I would love to have it once a week, but we typically get it about once every couple weeks. I found from this place called Wild Fork, you might not have it by where you are. They have a really good salmon that is sushi grade. And I was getting that for a little bit and having it about once or twice a week. And I find that my body and like, I get this like 
mental effect from raw salmon. And so I love that. I have that in my diet, like I said, once every couple weeks, once a week if I'm lucky. Uh, other than that though, I'm not really into a lot of like the white flaky fish. I'm more of like the fatty fish, meaning salmon type of gal. Uh, so yeah, so that's the foundation of my diet. Then moving on to my carbohydrate sources. I don't look at vegetables as like foundational to my diet. I look at vegetables as they provide carbohydrates, which provide energy for me. I did strict carnivore diet for about six months. And after coming out of the weight loss that I experienced from Kratom addiction, I found that doing a low carb to no carb diet does not work for me. Because what happens is it pushes me into ketosis, which is essentially your body starving and it's using its own fat sources to fuel itself. And that doesn't work for me. Mentally, it doesn't work for me. Energy wise, I don't have enough energy when I ate the carnivore diet, but everybody's different and some people thrive on it, just like some people thrive on the vegan diet, um, the raw vegan diet. So all of our bodies are different, but for me, I need carbohydrates complex carbohydrates, which means like unprocessed, unrefined carbs. So what that looks like for me is um, basic potatoes. I eat a mixture of potatoes on a daily basis. Um, I eat either like, you know, these yellow potatoes, red potatoes, which we have in the fridge. I've been doing um, this sort of thing, which is like a shredded hash brown. There's nothing in there, it's just like the potatoes shredded. I put it in the air fryer. I have it with scrambled eggs, love it. Um, I also do sweet potatoes, carrots, that type of thing. This is another food, or pardon me, carbohydrate source. I love these, but they're super expensive and I consider it also like a treat thing. Um, they are grain-free tortillas that are made of cassava flour and coconut flour as the base and so these are also because they're like nine dollars a, a package i only have these like probably maybe once a week couple times a week and then i get more for my money because there's not much in here so those are the carbs that i eat and then going on to the veggies that i have um cabbage believe it or not and it's so weird because i don't do well with like cooked or steamed cabbage but what i love because I found, like I said, I'm very selective about the vegetables that I eat and dark leafy greens I do not do well with. Um, but for some reason, if I finely shred this cabbage and I put just a little bit of vinegar or lemon juice, something acidic and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of salt, I love to have this with my dense meat-based meals. It gives a variety in texture and flavor and I really enjoy this and my body does really well with the raw cabbage for some reason. Um, maybe the breaking down of it in that like vinaigrette sort of thing helps but I have this with every meal and I never get tired of it and I love it. Um, I have nori probably like once a week, once every couple weeks, typically when I have the salmon. Um, because we'll order sushi and I just get the, the salmon sashimi and I just have little pieces of this with my, with my salmon and I love it. Um, I love olives so much. Um, these are just some delicious, big, fat, juicy, um, green olives. I found that I don't really love Kalamatas and blacks for some reason, black olives, but these ones I really love. And, um... I'll go in and out with them. Sometimes I'll really want them like with every meal for like a couple weeks. And then these ones have been sitting in my fridge for a few days and I'm just like not as stoked at them on them. So yeah, so that's, I think pretty much, let me think about if there's any other veggies. I'll have an avocado every once in a while. Um, but yeah, I keep it really minimal with my veggies. Like I have my carb sources from them but I don't do well with like, I'll have salads sometimes is like, you know, kind of considered a treat thing too, because I don't look at it like there's any nutritional point. But sometimes when I'm out at a restaurant, having a nice salad with like, 
you know, steak or chicken on it, and like a side of fries or something I really enjoy. Um, speaking of the fries, I'll go ahead and move on to my treat foods. So, all right, like, I've had people say to me before, like, oh my gosh, you don't eat grains. Like, what do you eat? That's crazy. Like this, that, and the other. And I say like, you know, I got a lot of meat on my bones. I am eating good. And for me, what makes it possible and sustainable to do this diet long term is having these different things that I consider treat foods. You know, I don't look at it like I'm depriving myself of anything if I'm not eating bread or pizza or, you know, all the other stuff that I can't have that my body doesn't do well with. I look at it like, you know, I'm giving my body what it needs and I found all of these different things that make me feel like I'm having a little treat. These foods aren't the best foods for me, you know, in different ways, meaning they're not gonna serve any nutritional value, but I enjoy them. And I do believe that I deserve them. And I feel like for those of us that become too restrictive in the foods that we eat, then that can step into territory of a whole other, you know, realm of bad things that can come and can, you know, ultimately lead to disordered eating. So cutting out whole food groups like, you know, refined carbohydrates and grains and all that kind of stuff, I've been able to find these things that I enjoy eating. I don't have them all the time. You know what? Sometimes I'm having a hard week and I have them, you know, three or four days in a row. But I found that, like, I have them when I want them. I don't have them other times because I don't need them. And these are my treat foods. So my biggest weakness, y'all, as we started talking about French fries, my biggest weakness <laughs> is fried potatoes. I'm careful in my everyday diet. I don't have them because they are literally like crack to me. Like I have a hard time sometimes controlling, not sometimes, all the time. I have a hard time controlling myself when I eat them because like my hunger cues and like the connection between my brain and my hunger cues shut off because I get so blissed out on the flavor of them. Um, so my treat foods, and I have some because I'm in my, you know, my treat time, I'm in my day off and it has been a hard week. So I'm having more of my treat foods are things like potato chips are things like um, these freeze dried, uh, cauliflower, buffalo ranch, cauliflower bites that are, um, they're dairy free. So they're made with nutritional yeast, which doesn't really vibe with me the best. Um, but this is one of my treat foods, uh, pork rinds. These are one of my treat foods. So I have stuff like this. I also have um, when we get into like, I don't have refined sugar. I did have some on vacation. I have it very rarely, but I have to pay the price for it because it makes me feel like crap, quite honestly. It makes me have like anxiety and heart palpitations and I get raging headaches when the sugar starts to wear off. So what I have as my treats is I have these grain-free waffles that are made with um, tiger flour, tiger nut flour, which is not a nut I found out, and coconut flour. And so I'll have one or two of these, toast it, and um, I'll put either butter or I get this um, delicious vanilla coconut yogurt, and I'll pour a little bit of that, spread a little bit of that on there. Um, I'm really bummed that I got sucked into this hole because it's kind of like a trend right now, these Olipop sodas. Um, I tried one one time a while ago and I was like, I don't get the hype because I see these things all over the place. I see them all over social media. And I was like, what's the deal? So then I had, they have a cream soda flavor and I was like, oh my gosh, because I grew up drinking cream soda on the East Coast. And I was like, this is delicious. And two, what is in these things is there is like a, um, like a fi like a fiber, fiber blends because they consider it like a, uh, what do you call it? Prebiotics, because that's supposed to be like what feeds the, um, gut bacteria in our tummies. And, um, so it's cassava root fiber, chicory root, inulin, Jerusalem artichoke inulin, and cactus. And then these are sweetened with um, 
whatchamacallit, stevia, which I don't have a lot, and it kind of has a funky aftertaste, but I found with these sodas, I have it as a treat, like I said, I have it typically with like a really savory meal, and that like sweet, because this like fiber blend in there gives it this like weight and body to the texture that is super delicious, and you know, there's 16 grams of carbs in one of these, and so that in itself is like kind of like a little like fix almost where like I have these like I, I made some um, wings in the air fryer the other day and I had the wings and I had this as like a treat meal and it was really good. I don't have these maybe I have them probably once every couple weeks because, you know, uh, and I'm not, I was never a soda person. So it's weird that I'm in this. I think it's because of all into this. I think it's because of all the carbs that are in there. Um, so those are my treat meals. Um, flavors and seasonings. We're getting to 20 minutes in this video right now. I'm going to try to be swift because I'm trying to keep my, my vlogs a little bit shorter. Um, one of the things that I found within the past six months and this makes a single tear roll down my face because anybody that has known me for a while knows how much I love salt and salty foods. I always have, I probably always will, but unfortunately, as with many things in life, I found salty foods don't love me. And especially regular salt, regular iodized salt, and even sea salt, I found that in large amounts, my body just does not process well anymore. I get really puffy. I actually, because I did have a little too many of my chips last night, I woke up and can't tell because I have decent lighting. You might be able to tell, but I get really puffy under my eyes. You can kind of tell. Really puffy under my eyes. And I thought that it was from different reasons. And then when I cut out the extra salt in my diet, I saw that completely go away. So now I'm very careful about how much salt I have. And if I have too much, I pay the consequences for it. And um, it also doesn't make me feel good. I feel how my body processes it and it dries me out. It makes me really thirsty. Um, I get the swelling. My heart starts to beat really quick. I'm sure because of my blood pressure. So I found that eating less salt and also switching exclusively to real salt, which I have done at different times before, but to save money, I went to regular sea salt for a while. Um, but I found that my body processes this a lot more. Um, in the realm of seasonings, I don't do well with very heavily seasoned food, whatever the seasoning is. Um, so I keep, when I cook at home, I keep it very simple. I use, I don't use seasonings and salt as I'm cooking. I only use a little bit of the real salt as a finishing, um, sort of thing. I use, if I'm getting really crazy and it's also like a treat thing, I'll use a little bit of like onion powder or something like that on my meat. Um, but I don't do it frequently. And uh, so that's the main kind of seasoning component. I'm from the East Coast. Here in Chicago, people hate on ketchup. It's all about mustard on hot dogs out here. And I don't care. I will love ketchup until the day that I die. And um, I don't do, obviously, regular ketchup because of the sugar content. Um, and so I get this. And I'm so thankful that Whole Foods started to make this because I was getting a brand of sugar-free ketchup that tasted so good, but it was super expensive. It was like $9 a bottle. And Whole Foods came out with their own brand of the sugar-free ketchup. So I'm stoked on that because I love putting that on my scrambled eggs. Um, let me see if there's anything else we need to talk about. We'll talk about supplements at the end because I was about to talk about putting ketchup on my burgers. I want to cover just a general like what I eat, how I eat these foods. Um, so I eat two meals a day because I eat heavier, you know, meat-based meals. I eat what works best for me is I eat two big meals and I don't do any snacking. Um, I find that I'm pretty good too, you know, with what I eat. Um, if I eat my first meal at about noon, I eat my second meal, which isn't the greatest, 
after I get home from work at night. So it can be about 11, 1130. Um, a lot of people don't like to eat before they go to bed. I've noticed a little bit more weight on my body that I think is contributed to that, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at the weight and it helps me to sleep well. But when I eat before bed, some people talk about how it's not great for digestion and stuff. But I found that when I like something, I'll eat it repeatedly, sometimes for even months at a time. And then I'll switch to something else for my primary meal that I like to make. I switch things up on my days off, like I was saying, where I have what I consider a treat day, where I'll get a takeout sandwich that's made on plantains instead of bread, or we'll do sushi takeout, or I'll get a nice cut of meat that I'm stoked to make and enjoy. Um, but typically on a daily basis, and I've been on the burger kick for, I don't even know how, how long now, probably years at this point, where I'll take my pound of ground beef, I'll make it into four patties and I throw it in the air fryer before we had our amazing, wonderful, glorious air fryer. I had a toaster oven that, on the counter that I would put them into. Um, I grew out of pan frying burgers really quick because of the mess. And I find that either using a toaster oven set on like 400 or in the air fryer, um, I'm able to just put them in there and walk away and I don't have to deal with a mess afterwards. So I have my burgers as my print, kind of as both meals actually most of the time. Um, and then I'll have some sort of carb, whether it be roasted potatoes or my um, shredded potatoes. And then I'll have my little cabbage salad on the side, maybe a couple olives, maybe a couple slices of avocado, my ketchup, of course, a little sprinkle of the real salt. And um, that's what I have. I didn't mention chicken. I do eat that occasionally with like the skin on and stuff, but it's not something that I pine for or I need. Um, I eat organ meats when I need them, beef liver primarily. Um, I found that because I'm eating on average at least a pound to a pound and a half, sometimes two pounds a day, depending on the circumstances of red meat, which I, I cook to rare, preferably medium rare sometimes if I don't make it back to the air fryer on time. And so I'm getting plenty of iron and the organ meats I find if I'm feeling a little sluggish, which is how I felt when I was anemic. Um, my iron levels will be good eating this way, but sometimes um, I'll have a little bit of, of like raw primarily beef liver that I keep in the freezer. I'm not like sitting there eating raw liver like at room temperature. I keep it frozen. I'm not really into the taste. So I cut little pieces and I'll basically like swallow them whole like pills. Uh, moving on and what that's gonna end the segment of this video. Um, speaking of swallowing the liver like little pills because if you remember in the beginning of the video, I was talking about taking beef liver supplements. I ended up finding that just getting beef liver, um, preferably from a farm, but I've gotten some from Whole Foods too. Um, we're not, we're not going to get into organic and grass fed right now because it's like its own thing. But I basically, after a lot of research, have come to the understanding that we eat what we can afford and eating all grass fed organic food is just not possible for a lot of us these days. And two, for flavor, I'm not really into grass fed as much because there's more fat in the conventional. And we'll just say it really quickly that all cattle is raised on pasture until the last, I forget how long it is, like maybe month of their lives. And then ones that are considered conventional grain fed, they're finished with grain. And the difference between grass fed and, and, and grain fed um, is that the grass fed is finished on grass and hay instead of um, the grain. So there is a, not much of a difference in most of their lives. So I'm just going to say that an organic, we don't even need to get into all of that right now, but eat what you can afford is the point that I'm trying to drive home. So my supplements are, 
I've, I've gone in and out. I've taken a lot of different supplements over the years and I have settled on this mixture of stuff. I'm just going to go over it super quick. Um, speaking of animal based stuff, I love colostrum. Um, I found that it helps with many different things. It's extremely nutritious. I'm not going to talk about exactly what it is, but look it up. Um, vitamin C is super important to me. Um, this is a liposomal vitamin C. Some people have talked about how high doses, like mega dosing of the liposomal vitamin C has helped them with kratom withdrawals. So this stuff is really awesome. Um, I'm showing you my daytime supplements and then I'll show you what I take at night. I've included hyaluronic acid over the past couple months. I'm all about stuff that increases moisture in our bodies. And I'm all about taking things that help our skin, especially after kratom addiction, you'll know that. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, getting over a little cold. Um, so the hyaluronic acid I've found has been really good with that. Uh, I take a daily digestive formula, which is enzymes. For my probiotics, I will get, um, what do you call it? It's like that probiotic water stuff. The name of the brand that I drink is called Kavita. What is the name of that stuff? I'm forgetting. It's not kombucha, but it's like a probiotic water. And I'll have that about once a week. I find I don't need probiotics every day. Um, so, and I, and when I have, I'll, I'll say this because I was like, trying out probiotics again recently and when i was taking probiotic um like supplements it would make me so bloated so i've learned i do best with just digestive enzymes and i'll get one of those probiotic water drinks oh, why am i spacing the name of what that stuff is whatever you probably know what i'm talking about kavita is the name of the brand of that probiotic water so i have that about once a week um, and then at night, oh, I didn't pull this one out. Um, you know me and my aloe vibes. So I take this too. It's aloe vera plus. It's aloe vera, um, like dehydrated aloe vera juice and then organic marshmallow root and slippery elm. And these are really great for hydration and also gut health. So I really like this stuff. And then at night, I take my tried and true magnesium calm. I love it at night. It helps me to mellow out. It helps me to sleep. Um, and then I take that with my vitamin D. And those are my nighttime sups. And then I also drink chamomile tea every night. Um, do a video about chamomile sometime and me and chamomile have just been like you know like that and it's really good some people I don't think have as pronounced effects but I just love how it mellows me out um I love how it helps me sleep um and I think that it would be really beneficial for kratom recovery for anybody who is going through it after we get off of Kratom, our nerves are frazzled. We have a lot of anxiety. We're not able to sleep. Create, uh, pardon me, chamomile is not going to be like, you know, amazing for everybody. It's a very light, like it's considered a flower, an herb or whatever. And so it may not like rock everybody's world like it does for me. But I find that the effects from chamomile are like what I was searching for in kratom or in weed because of that mellowing, soothing quality that it gives me. So just a shout out to chamomile. Um, cool, guys. So this part of the video has been a little bit longer than I wanted, but um, we'll probably just wrap it up right here, actually. I'm going to put my roast in the oven. I was gonna show you, maybe I'll just do some little clips at the end, we'll see, of like when my sandwich gets here, what the roast looks like when it's finished. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm not gonna do an outro or anything after that. So formally wanna say, I will see you next time. Thank you for the understanding with the more sporadic videos that there's more time in between since getting back from our vacation, 
There's been a lot going on with just getting settled again. And you know how I do. I'm always working a bunch of days in a row and all of that kind of stuff. Got a little cold, was like getting over that. Um, excuse me. So yeah, so I appreciate your understanding. And I'd like to say that like, oh, I'm going to have two videos a week. But right now, it's kind of just going to be a go with the flow sort of thing. I will let you know, though, that there are some videos that I'm wanting to make and I'm not going to I'm not going to say what they are yet, but stay tuned when the videos do come. There's going to be some stuff that I really am looking forward to doing. I will give you this little inside look that um, I am going to slowly but surely remake all of my beginning videos that we started off with here on this channel like these really like um crucial foundational informational videos here on our channel um that i know a lot of people have seen have resonated with but i've talked about it before how like I uh, was not comfortable in front of the camera during that time. So I'm gonna remake these like really like foundational beginning videos, like how I quit Kratom, um, maybe do another one about pause, um, that sort of thing. So that's gonna be some of what's to come. And so I will see you then and have a great rest of your day wherever you are, wherever you're at in your recovery. Know that the best is yet to come, even if it doesn't feel that way right now. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.